today I thought we might have a look at the relationship between the language used in Matthew's Nativity and Luke's Nativity. We've looked at Luke's Nativity verse by verse, but what about Matthew's? We've got here Matthew 1, 18 to 25. It's very different. It starts off straight away with the genesis, the birth. That word is never used in the narrative of Luke, and it makes the start of the gospel very clear. And obviously it's what we call the first book of the Old Testament too. And Jesus Christ is fronted at the beginning of the text. That name is not given to us until much later in the Luke. Manes Derotes says, meaning betrothed, echoes what we see in Luke verse 2, 5 where Mary is described as betrothed to Joseph. In this section, she's called a gunaika, a woman or a wife, someone who was born a child. And this is not the term used of her in the Luke. Luke doesn't give her a separate word for woman or wife. Her status as a woman is not described. We've also got Parthenos here, and that's your maiden or virgin. So you've got both Gunaika, a woman who's born a child, and a Parthenos, an unmarried virgin, in the Matthew, without that status being reflected in Luke 2, 1 to 7. You've also got Maria, rather than Mariam, in Luke. So you've got a declined, Hellenised form of her name, rather than an indeclinable, Semitic form of her name. You've got a completely different term for being pregnant, en gastri ehusa in the Matthew. And in the Luke, that was given to you using just an adjective, enkur. Joseph is clearly described as her aner, her man or her husband. Again, he's given a status here in a way he's not given in the Luke 2, 1 to 7. He's not described thoroughly as her husband. A similarity is that we again have the angel of the Lord, Idu Angelos Kuriu, without an article. There's no article defining angel and that's exactly what we saw in the Luke. We then get a repetition of a phrase in the Matthew. We get Texatai Dehuyon. I'm going to put them in the lighter blue to show them together. Kai Kaleses to Onoma Autu Yesun. From the prophecy, Texatai Huyon, Kai Kalasus into Onoma Autu Emmanuel. And then it happening, Eteken Huyon, Kai Ekalasen to Onoma Autu Yesun. We saw that Luke did an awful lot of playing around with the tech root. You don't have that here. That tech root isn't repeated. We've got a son will be called and will be born. We've got a son will be born and will be called with the future Texatai and Calasus and then the future Texatai and Calasusin there. And then the aorist Eteken and Ekalesen. It's going to happen and then it happened. But we're not really given much about the process of it happening. The Eteken is what we get in Luke 2.7. But we don't immediately get the use of Calio to name him, that is hung on to for a few more verses. Instead in Luke we then get the swaddling and manger, which you don't get in the Matthew. We do still have the focus on Rethen, which in Luke would be Rema. So we've had the Rema in the Luke, which is the Rethen in Matthew, rather than just Logos. But what we haven't got in the Matthew is the focus on Laleo that you get in the Luke every time you get that Rema used. In the Matthew, we also don't get any place names. So we don't get that geographical spread that we see in Luke and that echoes the long travel narrative that we get in Luke with so much detailed geography later on as Jesus heads towards Jerusalem. 
these are just a few of the places where there's both some clear echoes between the language of the Luke and the Matthew, but also some, some clear differences that go beyond just going, well, the episode of the shepherds isn't here, for example. <laughs>